Hey guys, this is Kevin Estella with Fieldcraft Survival. I'm joined with by Austin right here. And we kind of have essentially the product development guy. He's like SEAL Team 6, but for Chris Reeve. What? For Chris Reeve's nice. Oh, we got Tim Reeve here. So uh, head of product development, kind of multi-tool, machine master. Like if we've been following him around all day and he can talk us through any machine you could possibly mm. imagine along with all the history of all, all the knives. So we're kind of just going to do a little overview of, of knives, a little history of knives, maybe some of the questions that you might have, our take on those questions. Um, you know, things that usually come up in the hunting realm, like, hey, when do I get my first knife? Uh, hey, what are some things that you shouldn't do with a knife? Like, there's a lot of questions like, oh, my knife should be able to do X, Y, and Z. Well, we're here with, again, SEAL Team 6. Um, so uh, let, let's just jump right into it. So, Tim, what's the... Like, what's the number one thing that you can say, like, you get a question from someone about your knives. By the way, Chris Reeve knives, if you've never seen them, they are essentially like the Cadillac of, uh, of knives. Um, so you should definitely check out their website. But what, what are, like, like, what's the number one question that you get about your knives? Uh, sharpening's probably one, like, one of the biggest things. Just how should I sharpen it? How should I go about it, right? Like, that's usually number one when I look at, kind of 30 years in the bigger picture, right? Mm -hmm. A lot, there's a lot of like number one questions probably like very specific to our knives. But when it comes to like broadly, it's it's how do I sharpen it? How do I maintain it? That's kind of number one. You know, a lot of folks that own knives come from the, the uh, you know, own cars or have guns or something like that. And maintenance is like a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. How do I maintain the car? How do, what, what do I need to do to make sure it, it functions continually? And that's usually the biggest problems when we have knives that come back in, it's they haven't been maintained or they've been like kind of pushed too far. So I, I don't know if that answers, but yeah, that, that's usually what it is. Kind of like sharpening and, and maintenance stuff. So how would you recommend sharpening them? So I, I come with a very like uh, non-specific answer. It's, it's whatever way works best for you, right? Okay. So a lot of people come to me and say, hey, t you know, Tim Reeve, like what? How do you sharpen? I'm like, well, I actually sharpen a handful of different ways. Depends on what I'm doing in the day. I like a ceramic rod and a piece of leather. That's one of my favorite ways. Like uh, um, this right here is the, the just like the Spiderco Sharp Makers Triangle Stone. Um, I like the brown stones as opposed to the white personally, just because it takes. I don't have all day to sharpen my yeah. knives, right? Like, yeah. uh, but the fine stones are great. And and really, I just I just kind of go back and forth like this, you know. So you're slicing from the heel to the tip, yeah. minimal pressure. Like I've heard it's about yep. the same amount of pressure as like shaving. Yeah, light to medium. You know, if you're having to do a lot of profi like reprofiling work, big chips, things like that, get something coarser, push harder. Yeah. Um, I come from a very non-technical sharpening world. Now, obviously in the back, when we send knives out to sharpen, that's a whole different ball game of what we're doing right. and what we're accomplishing. But so I love doing that. Uh, I'll use, I'll use, uh, ceramic rod and then usually just like a rough part of a, the, the suede back on, a, on some leather and just work it backwards. Now most knives and, and specifically our knives have a nice like a convex edge and that works great with a strop. Now you can use leather, you can use leather with compounds, you can do a lot of different things but just working it backwards and forwards. If you can get something stable you can put two hands on it that's even nicer. Mm. That's my way to go about it. Um, and I won't demonstrate this with your knife, but I know one of the, the big yeah. no-nos is when you're stropping, you don't want to roll like almost. Is that a big no-no? Oh, I just don't. Oh, no well, idea. no, I mean like when you don't oh, want all the, the blade to go yeah. to go uh, vertical because you're actually going to be defeating the purpose of stropping, right? Like, Sorry. and I've you're heard people right. say like, oh, lift it up the, the thickness of the blade, but I mean as long as you're right. you're consistent with it, right? Um, and this is why I love doing like sharpening stuff with other people because I constantly find out how I like do things wrong and break the rules like <laughs> like everyone says I strop too hard which is probably true um, a lot of and but that kind of brings me back to my the point that I try and make is like sharpen it for what works for you yeah. uh, a dull knife in your pocket just isn't gonna work right well and, and it, it brings the point home too of like it's what's practical like yes. not everybody has the ability when you're in the field to just yeah. oh let me measure what this is or what that is get your like, angle gauges yeah, out and do like all just, that like you just can't just, bring down the field yeah i mean you can i've sharpened knives with river rocks you know yeah. what i mean as long as you have uh, a rough edge yeah. that's harder than your blade yep uh, or in some cases softer if you're stropping yep yep you're gonna get your knife sharp you know yep. you just remove those particles yeah and it's it's maintenance right like it's yeah. not like i'm sharpening it to put it on a showroom i'm sharpening it to be sharp enough to clean an animal uh, cut cordage, do whatever it is I need to do. With yep. the deal, you know? Not to point this to a different video on YouTube, uh, but I will. Uh, the the uh, the the meat eater guys were on with Benchmade or Workshop or somebody 
doing like some couple of sharpening videos, and I just liked how uh, Steve Rinella framed this really cool concept. It just, just he's on the mountain doing it, like how to sharpen in the field, and it's like the point that he started off with is like <laughs> this is not like where you start sharpening. It's like where you main, keep mm -hmm. maintaining yes. sharpening. Make sure it's sharp like before you leave the house. Yeah. Things like that. Now you have accidents, you have problems in the field. So it's nice to be able to like do some heavy lifting, mm -hmm. but you can't be super picky about like how fine your edge yeah. is when you just got to get something cut, right? right. So that, that's kind of my little take there. Yeah, totally right, agree. So now another one. Now guys, I'm gonna show you two ways that you can carry a knife uh, and I'm gonna show you one incorrect way. And I just, I won't say I called someone out for this recently, but I might have. Um, Many of these folding knives, like the this is the Sebenza 31, have a pocket clip, right? And a lot of people will think that that pocket clip gets worn like this. My best friend does that. This drives me absolutely <laughs> up a wall, right? <laughs> Don't do this because as you're walking through the woods, these have a tendency to pop off and you, you can you can lose them. And I, listen, I'm I'm guilty of this too. Occasionally, I'll clip I'll clip my blade here, but just as easily I could step down and I could lose mm -hmm. my knife, right? Mm -hmm. A real simple way of carrying your knife yeah. is inside the waistband, right? Everyone carries appendix. Well, you've got this angular crease, right? Mm -hmm. Where your, your thigh meets your pelvic bone. And it's a very common way of carrying your blade. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but this is the, probably yeah. one of the safest ways. Um, you can actually sleep with your knife clipped to your shorts if you want like this. You'll never be without a blade. So you can either carry it here. You can carry it inside your, your pocket here. Right? Please don't be the person that clips it to the outside or clips it to their belt to the outside like that because you could easily easily lose it. Yeah. Um, what That's knife tips one. do you have? Because I got a bunch. Oh man, um, hop on in. I guess I would say one of the most popular questions that I get all the time is, what's the best knife to carry? What's oh, yeah, the, best the best type of oh, knife yeah. to carry, right? Yeah. So like- One um, knife to rule them all, right? right? And, and unfortunately, the answer that I always have for that is there is no one knife to rule them all. They all oh, it's have expensive. a different- I, I'm gonna find expensive. it though. Yeah, <laughs> one, well, day, one day we'll all find it, right? But I mean, even just me, you know, I carry a, a Swiss Army knife. I have some type of a folder. And when I'm in the field, um, I carry a fixed blade, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, uh, you have to have multiple tools to serve multiple purposes. So, uh, but I think the age old question is, Fixed blade versus folder. folder, right? You know, right? And there's a compromise, right? Like, like this allows you to carry something very uh, practical. Like mm -hmm. you can, it, it folds in half, right? right? That's a compromise. But compared to a fixed blade, you're going to, and it's, it, it could be the strongest folder in the oh, world. Yeah. You're going to have a weak spot right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the compromise is weight. The compromise is the how compact, I mean, mm -hmm. in the end, it, an edge is an edge. From a, a bushcraft perspective, from a carving perspective, all I need is what the blade that's showing right there. I just yeah, need one inch in front of my index finger on my carving hand. I could have a, a 20 inch blade, but I'm doing the vast majority of my knife in work. The heel. Yeah, in that yep. heel right there, which some people say like, hey, plain edge yeah. or serrated. Yeah, another question. Um, it really comes down to, to your, your purposes. Um, the serrated edge tends to tear through material very aggressively. It, it rips material, whereas the, the plain edge is better for fine, fine carving. Now guys, uh, something that comes up is how do you hold on to a knife? Now I bring this up in every single class that we teach, all the, all the survival classes, the different grips, okay? Um, this is what you would call a hammer grip, right? It's just like you would hold a hammer. This is what's referred to as a saber grip. Now imagine if this blade were this long, right? Like really, really long, and if I were a pirate, right, holding a long saber, if I were to swing that sword back, I would need extra support. By doing this, it allows me to stop that blade from going back before I swing it forward. So mm. it's called the saber grip. A lot of guys carve like that. A lot of guys end up getting splinters through their thumbs like that. So I'm a big fan of using the hammer grip. But you can't deny that this is used for fine work up at, up at the tip of the blade. Now, if I turn this knife 90 degrees and I hold it like this, this is what's called a uh, foil grip. Right, And this is for, if I were to bring my hands up close, I could do fine carving like this. I could also turn it 90 degrees the other way and do fine carving like, like a grandpa cutting a, a slice of apple for their kid. Mm -hmm. This is the correct grip that you would use if I were cutting line. Right, You always want to cut back towards yourself. You don't want to have someone hold the line and, and push the knife into them. Right, For you hunters out there, this is a very common grip. I don't know how many times I've cleaned animals just like this. And I'm really just protecting the tip of that, that blade with my fingertip. So I'm gonna lead with the knife as opposed to uh, leading with my finger. Now, 
there's a reason for that. If I lead with steel, steel on steel has a very specific sound. So if you happen to find a broadhead that's in a deer that healed, you'll catch it with the blade as opposed to with your fingertip. Okay, so we have hammer, saber, foil. We've got this reverse grip. We've got this grip right here. Um, there are other grips you can get into with like fixed blade knives. Like I could wrap this around my hand like that. And if I wrap it around my hand tightly, I have an extended grip that allows me to chop with the knife, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you'll have a little bit of a nub. You can put your ring finger through that nub. And when you put your ring finger through that nub, same deal, I can now chop with a knife, taking something that has about a seven inch blade and making it like a 10 inch blade, right? Mm -hmm. So you got all different knife grips that you can use. Very, very rarely will you need this ice pick grip, but it is used occasionally. Like if we're doing a bushcraft class, if I put my knife in a log, I can now have the knife in a fixed position and I can draw material into it, right? But very rarely will you need that. Um, but if you do have to use that, don't forget to cap and this is how you get, I know you guys are squared away with your knife designs. This doesn't hurt when I cap my thumb over the top. Some knife companies put a point on it where you go to use that and next thing you know, you, you end up with a bloody thumb. Yeah. Um, and that, that actually brings up a really good uh, point too is, is talking about the way that you gripped it is, is using the lanyard because, uh, and we've talked about this before, but the lanyard serves a lot more purposes than just uh, attaching it right to your, right to your, uh, right to your knife so you can tie it off to something but using that lanyard like you said as a loop a mm -hmm. fixed point um, and then also tying it into using it as part of your grip for chopping uh, lanyard is a really important part it's just nice to have way. spare cordage on it, it. is it's yeah. multi-purpose if you've been on my classes you guys know that i always carry a swiss army knife and i carry it in my front pocket with a fire steel inside of a pouch because this whole you know pouch and and pocket like that I know that I have it on me. The slick sides of the Swiss Army knife tend to slip out of the pocket easily. I've never lost that though when it's it's in the pocket. Some people they say, "Well, you know, I want to get my kid a, a knife, but I don't want to get him a fixed blade because it's it's too dangerous." And I'm like, "Too dangerous?" Because of Rambo or something? You know, because it's, it's fixed, <laughs> yeah. right? It, you know, it doesn't close. And people think that a you know folding knife is is safer, but it really comes down to the user. And when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, Swiss Army knife, I had the knife like this. And one of the tricks, obviously, is if you use two hands and you keep it out of the way, you're not gonna, you're not gonna close it on yourself. Uh, the other thing is you can get it out of the way and when the tip is pointed away from you, use the back of your leg to close it. Um, the minute that you start trying to close it with one hand and like, and these fingers get in the way, you're gonna draw blood. So mm -hmm. I'm a firm <laughs> believer that a good first knife for a kid is a fixed blade with a guard on it so you don't end yeah. up cutting yep. your index finger, stabbing trees, because every kid is gonna do it. I don't care how much you tell a kid not to do it. It's like, don't try to find those channels that are not allowed for you on, on yeah. cable. They're gonna go yeah. find them somehow. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a rite of passage, you know? Yeah, and I remember like in, in, when I was a kid, my dad said every, even toy knives were knives. Like right. you, you yeah. don't treat a toy knife yeah. like, a, like a toy knife because it'll, build bad habits yeah. for a real yeah. life. Yeah. Um, same thing with guns, right? Like there's no toy guns, they're all real guns. Um, but I've seen over the years bad habits of people and one of the ones that drives me nuts is when someone has a knife like this and they leave it on the edge of a oh, table God. with yeah. just a little bit of the edge exposed or enough where if it got knocked, just a little bit of the edge exposed. So if a person walks by, they get cut. Or my favorite, and I'm gonna close this because it even just it gives me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> when the knife falls, a person will go to grab it yeah, yeah. And then they get impaled, right? Yep. Or they grab it and imagine this is the blade and they ride the blade, you know, yeah. so they cut all, all their fingers. Um, so if a knife is falling, you down. drop it. Guys will, guys love putting knives in logs. Like I in the camp, they put a knife in a log. Someone sits on the log, it wiggles free and the knife falls in the, in the dirt or better yet in the snow. And if it snows more and you go to find that knife, now everything is level, right? So you'll never find your knife. A good rule to follow is if your knife isn't in your hand, you should resheath it, yeah. right? Yeah. Don't leave it in trees. Don't leave it, you know, sheathed in, in the animal that you're butchering. You're going to lose it. So if it's not in your hand, it should be in your sheath. Yeah. Um, just same thing. Like even this has given me a little bit of the, the, the agita, you know, <laughs> like whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, yeah. Other bad habits. Can you think of anything that like 
if, if a parent were showing this to a kid, yeah, thank you. Dude, at the, at the shows all the time, people put them down, and I've seen a lot of knives like go off the front, yanked. Like, just getting yanked, yeah. whether it's ours or somebody else's. That, and sometimes I take these off at the shows. But One of my favorite tricks, if a knife has a sheath, I'll take the, the cord and I'll put it behind the belt, yep. and then that way it gives me even a secondary level of retention. So if I were to have this thing unsnapped, I still have this behind my belt that would prevent it from coming completely out of the out. out of the sheath. Something that drives me nuts before I forget is how you hand a knife to someone. Now, I've been in a survival class where I, this is back in the day, where I handed a knife to a student like this and I was like, here's your knife. And that student grabbed the knife and yanked it out of my hand and almost did what was called a tip rip to the palm <laughs> of my hand. Well, you can't hand a knife to someone like this and I don't like that blade pointed at me. So I've gotten in the habit of holding a knife, positioning the edge away from me <laughs> and away from the person. And if I were to hand it to Austin, when he would grab it, he would c confirm that he has it by saying, I have the knife. Or thank you. Thank right? you. <laughs> and then he would hand it back to me the same way where I could grab a, mm -hmm. a portion of the handle and now I have it under control. Yeah. Because again, you don't want this thing pointed at anyone. Um, and it, it just drives me nuts when I see people mishandling mishandling blades. Yeah. So yet so, another good habit to build into like your younger hunter or someone who's not not familiar with yeah, knives. Yeah, that Filipino knife culture. It, it really is. Yeah. yeah, and it's like fold it, you know, like yeah. close the lock. Right, right. And like right. not to be the obvious one, but it's like yeah. how many people have a folding knife and just like pass it open or whatever. Yeah. It's like. You just close it. Yeah, it, it's really not that difficult to say, oh, here you go. And yeah, then, right. Like, you know, yeah. But I'm still the guy that will hand it like this. And even when I'm handing it, I'll control the, Make the sure blade. Make sure it doesn't open, open or something up, like right? that. Yeah. Um, but guys, I mean, there, there's a lot to be said about, about knives. Uh, if you're watching this, you're probably a hunter. You probably have a hunting knife. Um, any of these knives could be used for hunting. But believe it or not, you don't need the biggest knife in the world to, to dress mm -hmm. an animal. Um, something like this Impinda, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Impinda. this Impinda. Uh, a slip joint can do all the work that you need to, um, and it's not terribly intimidating. Very well-made knife, but that's all you need yeah. in, in the great outdoors to do 99% of the, the work you have to do. Um, so Yeah, a lot of people ask me, like, what's the best knife out there? And it's just like the one in your pocket. The one, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the simplest <laughs> answer, and, and yeah, the one in your pocket, and yeah. then sharpen it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take care of it. It helps. Yeah. Uh, we should probably tell the viewers where they can find you. Yeah, uh, basically here at Chris Reeve Knives all the time. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, on, on you know, we have chrisreeve.com. We have, uh, a, a, there's like a fan page, a Facebook fan page, obviously Facebook and those kind of places. Um, that's where you can find the company. Um, yeah, if you, if you want to get a hold of me, call, call me during working hours. I'll be here. I'll get on the phone. I got no problem. We got some, a, a lovely crew here that love to talk knives and take care yeah. of people. And so I love this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I love having some actual useful tips rather than just like, you know, the, the obvious ones. So. Right. Well, yeah. if you want to find us or if you want to find us, uh, you can find Fieldcraft Survival, uh, fieldcraftsurvival.com, uh, fieldcraftsurvival.locals.com. That's our locals page. Uh, Instagram is at Fieldcraft Survival. Um, and feel free to shoot us, shoot us questions. I mean, we're, we're here to educate, right? And, you know, Chris Reeve Knives has, has been in business for a long time. I've been a fan of theirs since 2000, 1999, somewhere around there. Um, I'm debating which knife to get next. I kind of have an idea, and it might be this one with a couple features on it. Just throwing it out there. So if you guys have a comment which knife you want to see me use, put it in the comments below. Um, but guys, thanks for thanks for watching, and you know, check us out. Uh, we'll be coming back at you next month with more tips.